Uh, great to have you, Mark. And I, I guess when, when we look at your superheroes and they attract millions of fans, uh, the question is, why, why do you think there's an appetite for change? I think uh, you know pop culture has to keep evolving or else it atrophies. Like uh, when I was a kid growing up, I read very uh, simplistic comic books, and as I was a teenager, they, they just became a little bit more sophisticated. And that I think every uh, ten or twenty years, we just have to reinvent these things. And I feel now, uh, I, I don't know, you know, the, the the mainstream audience is so comics literate. We've seen almost everything now. It's maybe try time to try something a little different. Isn't the point about the the comic book hero, the superhero, that they are sort of mercifully black and white, they're on the side of law or on the side of evil. They allow people a very, if you like, relaxing ride into what they know is going to happen there. I know what you mean, and I think it certainly served that purpose. I mean, even like Superman, you know, was created by two Jewish kids in the Depression back in the 1930s, and it's a form of escapism that I think we all need. Psychologically, we've always needed these kind of heroes, going back to the Greek myths. But I do feel slightly culpable, you know, also, you know, while we're worried about Gotham City, we are forgetting about places like Detroit, and it's very apparent to me that we're rooting for billionaires like Bruce Wayne in these, these movies now, when maybe half the people in the cinema can't pay their rent. So I just feel, while all eyes are on superheroes, maybe it's time to try something a little bit more radical with them now. So just talk us through this radical idea, because you were very affected by what you saw in Detroit. Yeah. How does MPH convey that? Well, I think it was funny because, I mean, I sort of see both sides of America, I guess, because, you know, I work in Hollywood and I, I work in publishing in New York and I, I see the most extravagant side of it, which is, uh, you know, what I'd see 90% of the time. But then when I do something like a book tour, I'll maybe go through the South and I'll see places like Kentucky and Arkansas. Um, and I went to visit a friend when I was in the States up in Detroit. And it was really, it was the America that we don't see in superhero comics. We don't, we don't even really see in television. You know, they, they promote a very glamorous America uh, that everybody wants to be a part of. But I just thought it's a response responsibility as writers sometimes to tell the truth and I thought well you know maybe it shouldn't always be about fictional cities and let's talk about the real thing. So they are more grounded in reality how do you know that the guys that are from Detroit that have come to the cinema yeah. you know sitting there eating their popcorn it, it's the last thing that they actually want to see on the screen. Yeah. Well, I don't know, there's an element of catharsis too. You know, I mean, I grew up uh, in the west of Scotland, which isn't a million miles from Detroit, really. You know, it's a kind of uh, post-industrial place, you know, where there was massive unemployment. There was a deindustrialization without really any kind of plan, kind of similar to what happened really in Detroit, you know, from the 50s uh, onwards. Um, so I felt a kind of connection with it in a strange way. And I think I kind of love the catharsis of superheroes instead of just, you know, stopping bank robbers or like Batman going out mm. and fighting poor people every night. I love the idea of uh, superheroes who maybe went out there and sort of fought for the little guy. Like maybe, you know, if you get superpowers, you don't always do the sort of black and white thing. You maybe put food on the table of people who can't afford to pay their bills anymore. Easier to portray that in a film, perhaps, than, than on the page. I mean, the page is, is flatter, and I mean that in, in every sense. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I've done this job since I was 19. You know, I try my best. I'll see what we can do. But we're, we're doing the film at the same time. Like, we have a Detroit screenwriter, just uh, coincidentally, you know, who's doing the screenplay just now. And the Transformers producer is uh, making it into a movie. So we're going to try and make it as uh, as close to home as possible. Well, you've sent this to Obama. You've sent yeah. it, I think, to other senators and, and Congress men and women. What what do you what do you want to happen? Visibility is the thing, not for my book, um, you know, I mean like <laughs> visibility in terms of, you know, just making people not forget about Detroit, because this is something that's been going on since the American car industry collapsed in the 50s. You know, Detroit's been like, uh, it's been America's nightmare really for, for half a century now. And occasionally it becomes a kind of sexy thing, we get a double page spread in The Guardian talking about how, how awful it is, and there's the kind of ruin porn where we see inside all these abandoned theatres. But it seems odd that the fourth richest city in uh, America at one time is now something that looks like something out of the second or even the third, third world in places. So I, I just think visibility, like let's not talk about Gotham City for a little while. If, if everybody that goes to cinema is going to see superhero movies, let's start sneaking some of this stuff in there too. You know, I, I want 10 year olds to know about this as well as they know about the Power Rangers or whatever. You know. So Mark, when you say, you said earlier you felt culpable, slightly culpable yeah. of, of the sort of, the, you know, the, the sort of niceness, if you like, of the superhero and yeah. not relate to reality. If this doesn't work, do you, yeah. Do you still return to the Superman, the Spider-Man, the, the rather sort of establishment figures who just do good? And what happens to all the violence, the kick-ass stuff? 
Well, I, I think um, I think we need both. In all honesty, you know, because wouldn't it be awful if if everything was uh, the Avengers or everything was was uh, you know a Woody Allen movie or whatever? You know, I think I love the eclectic mix of pop culture. You know, so I like writing both. You know, I mean, I, I loved writing things like Iron Man or Spider Man or any of those things, but I love doing this more gritty stuff. I left Marvel four years ago. I worked at Marvel through. Uh, you know, the last decades, and I left Marvel to kind of become Marvel. You know, my plan is to sort of create all these franchises. I'm about nine franchises into it just now. Um, and, but I want to do the 21st century version of it. Like uh, Stan Lee, when he created all these characters back in the 1960s, was talking sure. very much about the world he was in, and I'm trying to do the same. Mark Miller, great to have you on. Thank you very Thank you. much.